Welcome to Authentic Walk with God. Today we want to look at the topic, A Perfect Church. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 28. I read, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who walk hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and uh, he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Is there any church that is perfect? I don't think so. And uh, I know that many of you want to be in a, in a church among Christians. I'm talking of Christian groups, uh, a fellowship, a gathering of God's people, where there will be no problem, there will be peace all the time and all of that. But I'm sorry that it's known. Uh, but, but, but here in, 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 the, in the passage we have just read, Paul describes a, a church that reflects uh, the person of Jesus Christ and what he wants in a gathering of those who trust him, who believe in him, who accept him as their, as their Lord and Savior. Uh, let me also state that the church is not a human institution. It is a divine institution. The church is not a social club. It is not a political association or party. The church is not a business establishment. It's not a commercial venture. The church is not a secret society. The Apostle Paul in chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 of this letter, uh, describes the church as a community loved and chosen by God, withdraws his life from God and manifests divine life in the basic Christian graces of faith, love, and hope. A community such as this could be called a gospel church. This name derives from the fact that uh, this unique community has been brought into being by the gospel and it is continuously shaped by the gospel. One New Testament picture of a gospel church portrays it as the family of God whose members recognize and treat one another as sisters and brothers. This is the key concept in the passage we are looking at today. The word brethren or brothers or sisters occurs five times in this passage. Verses uh, 12, 14, 25, and 26, and 27. This uh, bears witness to the truth that if through Christ God is our Father, then our fellow believers in Christ are our brothers and sisters. We are both children of the, of the day and members of the same family, the family of God. Therefore, our mutual relationship must profoundly affect our mutual behavior. The way to go must be the Christian way, and must all follow the same pattern of behavior. In this, in, in this particular uh, podcast, I'm going to share with you what Paul um, urges the Christians in Thessalonica to do. He urges them to love one another. For the brotherly love. Uh, if you read chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, it started there. Uh, to comfort one another, verses 18, I mean, verse 18 of First Corinthians chapter 4, to encourage one another and build up one another, uh, chapter 5, verse 11. Now he takes 
of one uh, by one three essential aspects of the life of the local church, all of which are items of contemporary debate or concern and gives apostolic instruction about them. First, he addresses himself to the leadership or pastorate. And we find this in verses 12 and 13 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And tells us how pastors and people should uh, regard and relate to each other. Secondly, he writes about the fellowship of the local church, verses 14 and 15. And about the responsibilities of church members to care for one another. Thirdly, he writes about the church's public worship. Uh, we see this in verses 16 through 28. And he discusses what should be included in it. And in particular, how the word of God evokes uh, the worship of God. Please find time to read these passages. Let us now look closely at these three areas of uh, a local church life, one by one. One, the pastorate. Chapter 5. Verses 12 and 13. Historically speaking, uh, the Church of Christ has oscillated unsteadily uh, between the equally unbiblical extremes of clericalism and anti clericalism. Clericalism is a situation in which the clergy keep the reins of power in their own hands, monopolize all pastoral leaderships and ministry, and having been put on a pedestal receive an exaggerated deference uh, while the so-called laity are well and truly sat upon uh, every men and women are not allowed any space in which to develop their god-giving gifts or exercise uh, them in appropriate ministries on the contrary the only Contributions from them, I'm talking of the later now, which are welcomed are uh, their presence on Sundays to occupy otherwise empty pews, some administrative and practical assistance, and of course, their money. At the opposite extreme is the overreaction called anti clericalism. This sometimes begins with the recovery of Paul's model of the body of Christ in which every member of the body, that is the local church, like every member of the human body, has a particular and distinctive function. Some Christians overpress uh, the analogy and deduce from it that uh, clergy in any shape or form is redundant. They claim that the church is better off without them. However, this extreme position overlooks the fact that according to the New Testament, the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, delegates to under shepherds or pastors the privileged oversight of the flock which he has purchased with his own blood. We know that the Thessalonian uh, uh, Christians uh, or the, Christ the Thessalonian church had responsible leaders, uh, but we do not know what prompted Paul to write uh, what he wrote in verses 12 and 13. Probably some church members had been disrespectful towards their leaders, or some leaders may have provoked their reaction by their high-handed or autocratic behavior. Paul rejected both attitudes. Now listen to how Paul describes local church leaders. One, Christian leaders are those who work among you. True pastoral work is hard work. It is more than a Sunday-Sunday affair. Two, Christian leaders are those who are over you in the Lord. At first reading, this may be a problem. Judging from what Jesus said, those who lead must be servants and not lords. However, authentic Christian leadership, an element of authority uh, in, in this passage, the element of uh, uh, management on the part of the pastor cannot be eliminated. But here, in relation to the leaders of the church in Jerusalem, the emphasis is not on their rank or authority, but on their efforts for the eternal salvation of uh, 
believers. Thirdly, Christian leaders are those who admonish you. The word admonish here means to warn against bad behavior and its consequences, to reprove and even discipline those who have wrong, wronged you or who have done wrong to you. I, I cannot use this uh, platform right now even to vent my anger to anybody. The pulpit, some, some preacher said that, like that. At the beginning, Christian leaders did not have a name. They were known by their activities rather than by any name. Later, they were called elders, then pastors, overseers, or bishops. Pastors should be respected and not worshipped anywhere. Secondly, the fellowship. This is the second area of church life. Paul examines in verses 14 and 15. Here Paul urges members to give pastoral care to their fellow members. The existence of pastors does not relieve members of their responsibilities to care for one another. Paul mentions three groups here, the idle, the timid, and the weak. Then he moves on from particular groups needing help to general Christian behavior. All personal revenge and retaliation are forbidden to the followers of Jesus Christ in place of revenge we are enjoyed to be kind. Then let's look at the third area of, of the church, the worship. Uh, and we'll find this in verses 16 through 22 and 27. Public worship must be planned. Public worship is a vital part of the local church. It is essential to its identity. There should be both content and form. Paul issues four instructions with regard to public worship, which lay down four of its essential ingredients. One, rejoice. Always rejoice. This means rejoice in the Lord. Secondly, pray continually. Thirdly, give thanks to, to God in all circumstances. And in the fourth place, listen to the word of God. Uh, of course, we find this verses 20 through 22. Treat with respect and not contempt any utterance which claims to come from God. Test its genuineness based on the scriptures and the person of Jesus Christ. In both listening and responding to the teachings of scripture, we should acknowledge the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is what uh, do not quench the Holy Spirit means. Paul is saying, let us allow the Holy Spirit speak to us through his word and listen to his voice. Do not quench him. Therefore, let the Holy Spirit move you to respond to his word in praise, in prayer, and in thanksgiving. Let me end this particular passage, or this particular podcast, uh, this way as I look at Chapter 4, I mean, chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, verses 23 28. Please read it yourself. In this passage, Paul uh, has given us a picture of an ideal local church. To their pastor, respect and love. To one another, mutual care and support. And to God, listening and res responding to Him. All these three are transformed when we remember that we are brothers and sisters in the family of God. Are you looking for a church where you can function and be happy? Look for a church where Jesus Christ is honored, where the gospel is preached, the raw message from the word of God, from the Bible. Look for a church where the Bible is the center. Uh, the Bible is the, 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 the central textbook, the main textbook the main uh, source of teachings and look for a church where uh, everybody regards each other or one another as brothers and sisters. Look for a church that ministers to the needs of those inside the church and outside. Look for a church that is missionary minded, uh, a church that is mission minded, a church that really loves to preach the gospel and reach out to the needs of people outside.
there is no perfect church. But there is a church that honors the Lord, a church that represents the personality of Christ, belong to that church. God bless you. Uh, until next week, this is your brother and friend, Peter and Lemadin Dong Wachuku, Director, Center for Family Life and Pastoral Care, Oware, Nigeria. God bless you. Very good.